So, what, so <laughs> first and foremost, YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in. We got a special one today. A super special Rolex is in this one, an iconic IWC, some stuff for my friends from MC Overall Company. They've sent me some stuff about six months ago to a year. I've been wearing ever since, and they sent me some new models. So I'm excited to see what's in this big bag. All right, we got a lot of Rolexes here, so we're gonna go through the Rolexes, give you a few market updates. Behind door number one, we have the, oh, it's Waco Oyster Flex 42 mil. Size. Yeah. First thing that comes to mind when it comes to the Yacht Master 2 in white gold is size. But the white gold to me always looks bigger than its Rolls Royce counterpart. Well, actually weird, because I just had this conversation. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? I had, well, I had a conversation with a client of ours who is in between the white gold and the yellow gold. And I told him that the yellow gold has a lot more real estate, there's a lot more precious metal in it. For whatever reason, the white gold one seems a little more contained, if that, if that makes sense. Is, the yellow gold contained. looks bigger, to me. To, to me, the, white gold looks I bigger. I think the yellow gold looks bigger. Well, which one do you like better? I like the white gold better. I do too. Just aesthetically, yep. I mean, just, it's just a better look for me anyway. Moving on. Moving on. Uh, let's go to, next we have another roly, roly, roly. Oh, market price on that. Market price on this, again, one of those pieces right around retail. In the condition like this, it's a 2022 used piece, it's right around the 30,000 mark. All right, well, something small, something pink, something cute. Got a pink. Sort, sort of a entry level Rolex. Uh, I do like this little pink dial. What's the list on this, do you know? Uh, I want to say around five grand. And they're selling for? Or right around there. Right around there. Yeah. So again, the, this this entry level stuff was still out, it still exists. Yeah. And today is the day where you can start picking this up around MSRP and I think. So I guess we just continue on with the Rolex. Are you like one handing it? I was trying to. What, what is, what is, what is, what is, is this see, a new thing? Like No, I just unboxed so many Rolex, I figured I could do it with one handed and I just did with the sub date 126610LN, 41 millimeter sub. Again, where are these trading at now? These are, these are still carrying a premium over retail. Because uh, again, this is the most in demand Rolex that there is. This is the Daytona. Let me ask you a question. Do it. So we always talk about the fact that the Rolex Daytona specifically. Yes. Uh, well, actually not the, just Rolex Daytona general. We always said that it's the number one selling watch period, num most popular watch selling period. If I argued you and said that maybe this is the number one selling watch, the Samaritan because of affordability factor? Well, you, you hit the nail on the head there. The demand is for the Daytona, I would say overall. But the people, of, people but, just want but it. But the amount of volume, people people are more inclined to pay, you know, at a $10,000 retail watch, they're more inclined to pay 13 or 14. Is that what you're going for now? Well, I'm saying at, at retail price. Right. At retail price, you walk out of the store, you're into it for 10,000. Like, nice okay, round let's number. just say. A Daytona is a $13,000, $14,000 watch at MSRP, which you're paying 3X for, right? So people are more comfortable paying that premium. They feel that there's not much of a bottom that they can hit. And what is the premium on this now? Right around there. So if it's 10,000, the premium on it is still 35, 40%. Whereas okay, so, a Daytona is- Okay, so it's one and a half a X more or less. More. Uh, IWC, old box, old style papers, which means it's going to be an older watch, but this watch is- Engineer uh, AMG. Iconic watch. Okay, so IWC's partnership with AMG started with AMG at the time where AMG wasn't actually owned by Mercedes-Benz. Now Mercedes-Benz owns AMG, a uh, brand that's near and dear to my heart. I am an F1 Mercedes fan. I've been driving Mercedes forever. But why this watch is a near and dear to my heart, and again, these are pieces that you can get out there and pick up very, very cheap. And the reason for that is because at one time there was a closeout from IWC on AMG models, the older AMG models such as this. This is the titanium automatic, beautiful watch. This is a Genta design, right? This is one of those iconic Genta designs. What came first, the Nautilus or the Ingenieur? Well, I'm gonna say Ingenieur. That's right. Because I did not know that, but since you asked that question, I, it's pretty obvious. Next time, <laughs> oh, somebody's alarm is off. What makes the Ingenieur a bit more comfortable is it's a bit thicker, so it sits a bit higher on the wrist. Uh, versus let's say the Royal Oaks, which tends to sit a little flatter. But again, iconic design from Gerald Genta. I don't know what he's going for, four or five grand, depending mm -hmm. on the variation. But just again, if you're somebody that's into the person, we talked about collectability in the past, whether it's complications, history, individual. If you're somebody who's a Genta fan, an engineer is a must have, and I would go with the AMG because I am very biased because I like Mercedes F1. Portofino. So celebrating 150th anniversary, uh, they didn't do this just across the Portofino, they did it across other lines, yeah. they did the Portuguese and so on and so forth. This is your simplest, most basic IWC that you can get into uh, for pretty much no money. 
Uh, the Portofino line has always been for those that want a smaller case, that want a more of a dressier option, because look, you look at IWC, I mean, you look, look I think I, I'm just gonna put this out there. If you are looking for a dressy watch, although we are saying you can wear dressy watches with sporty outfits now, because that is a vibe. But if you are looking for a dressy watch to wear with a suit or wear with a tuxedo, look no further. This is something that is not going to break the buck will not go down Couple, two it's three thousand dollars it's affordable throw it with the suit look at that. the navy blue suit and here's another beautiful you part about like this if what one of the things the portofilo line specifically from iwc was the one line that allows people to say oh my god i don't wear i don't want to wear a clunky big pilot i don't want a clunky yep. engineer i don't want to wear all those you know military style uh sportier watches that's a little bit of a back from the norm for them, but it gives those true IWC fans an option to wear something dressy. Rolex. Another 126610. I swear, it's, like I, it's, it's, it's been raining Starbucks yeah. the last week. And weekend. you know what? Every single one we've gotten in since we've done the unboxers is sold. Go on. It must, so it must be left. you. What? Must be you on the unboxers. I got that Midas touch. We just talked about an entry level Rolex. I'm going to talk about an entry level AP Royal Oak well, Ladies, which is. A completely different price point. Well, so, look, I would say I would say that's not necessarily modern entry level. Modern, right? That's what like, I'm saying. Yeah. So modern entry level, ladies Royal Low, 37 millimeters, automatic. What are these running? These are running around 30k. 30k, and the retail on them is about 21. Uh, low 20s, somewhere. Low 20s, yeah. right? So again, a watch. Right now, we're sorting out one and a half X for these pieces. Uh, Funny enough, a lot of the entry level watches are going to be at that one and a half X. Because look, especially when it comes to a ladies watch, you'll notice a lot of ladies watch have diamonds and, and colorful mm -hmm. dials or something else. This is very underwhelming and very low key. But there are plenty of ladies out there that want something like this. They want the brand, they want the watch, but they don't want the glitz. Well, they first don't off, want we've the, sold a lot of 15450 37 millimeters to men. Pretty nice. Look, it's a 37 millimeter AP, in my opinion, always runs a little bit big. I mean, that fits absolutely perfectly and here's, on a man. here's your 39 millimeter. Yeah, so it's it, it goes both ways, right? 37 can absolutely be worn by a man. I mean, so, what a catch. People are saying they love your watch, Ethan. Oh, uh, the Bumblebee. Yeah, baby, this is a classic, man. This is a- Shout port, out to Order Straps. Probably one of the most iconic offshores, the Bumblebee. Forged carbon case with the yellow, and then here we have a yellow Aura strap, which I find to be so much more comfortable than an AP strap. It's a lot strap. softer. It's so much more comfortable, but and it, it just wears like properly. Like the, my, the buckle doesn't sit low on me. It's just so comfortable. Shout out Porsche to Carver. And this is for sale, by the way. Right. So, oh, we should have just unboxed this. So we uh, just pretend right, we, did, right, we, we did the unboxing. All right, guess what I got in my hands. Ready? You want to Dun, 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 dun. Hold on. We have the brick watch. Now, before you guys go aped it on this and saying, oh my God, they got paid and this, that, Wait, and the other. Doing, are we doing the review right now? No, not the review. We're just going to show it to them. Warranty card. The, the main thing I want to show. Yeah, show them the invoice. The main thing I want to show is that we bought this watch. We didn't get it for free. This wasn't a, was a publicity stunt or anything like that. We talked about the watch. It, it kind of went a little viral. On the, Virality? Uh, viral, re viral reaction. Virality? That Virality. Or, not real. <laughs> so we did buy this watch, but what we are gonna do is, I'm gonna quickly show you the watch, and we're not gonna talk about it because we're gonna do a separate video on this. Here's the watch. We, we're out there for the automatic, and uh, what we decided we're going to do is we're gonna literally dissect this watch. And when I say dissect it, shout out to Peter. He's going to take this watch entirely apart, down to its last part, the movement, the dial, the hands. We're gonna lay it all on the table, and we're gonna literally price this watch out one by one if I or Adrian or anybody else out there decided to build this watch. I will tell you right off the bat, full-size bracelet, and they give you a ton of links too. So that's yeah. actually kind of cool. You don't see watches do that. But anyway, it doesn't matter. We're gonna break it all down. We're gonna dissect it starting from the packaging to the warranty card to everything and anything. How much would it take to actually create this watch? For all you guys screaming out there, it's a $100 watch, $100 watch. Well, guess what? We'll break it down part by part and you guys will see exactly what this is about. Right. Oh, look at that. The one that, I feel like I say the same thing over and over. Every time we get a two-tone root beer. It's two-tone root beer at Starbucks. Every, ta every time I, I see a two-tone root beer, I say the same thing over and over, which you guys probably already heard, but this, I believe, is the watch that put the two-tone Rolexes back on the map and made them popular again because it's a smoke, smoke show of a watch. Any updates on the pricing, or has this been pretty stable the last pretty couple stable. months? Where's it at now? Stable. Again, in a new condition, it's upwards of 20,000 today. 20, 21,000. And, but the retail on it is what? 14 and change. So, again, we're... Not, not it's quite a, one and a, a half X. It's a healthy premium based on supply and demand. For two-tone watches, a ridiculous premium. Two-tone watches were always discounted. So when I look at this, I'm like, premium, that's crazy. All right, so this watch I'm about to unbox right here is 
Belongs to a very dear friend of mine. We went to high school together. Um, we actually uh, are Eskimo brothers. For those of you that don't know what that is, look it up. Uh, me and him hung out for probably a good three years and then he became a huge star. Well, then I became a huge YouTube celebrity and he felt like a little overwhelmed by me uh, hanging out with me what? and that was that. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about the John Mayer. Okay. And In no, I was not friends with him. 12 years, the John, Mo John Mayer Daytona has been the most speculated watch of all time in its very short history. It came out 2016. The but what I mean by speculation is two, two years in a row, they were saying that the watch was gonna be discontinued. But I think more like three years. This was like, about it. this watch was like, the, was like the epitome of the GameStop uh, stock, right? Yeah. People just started putting crazy money into it and crazy money out of it. So the, the volatility of this watch in particular has been the craziest. Like this, literally like a roller coaster. And now it's kind of hit the equal Finally. Area finally hit the equilibrium so here we got the john mayer daytona yellow gold just such a pretty watch i mean we spoke about it many times before there's still so much demand for it it's just a pretty watch overall uh, let's go let's go talk about that volatility yes highest it went up to 140. well actually we sold 150. 150, 150 went up with to stickers uh early 2022 car yeah january car 2022 full stickers we sold for 150. what's so it's uh, what's, what, where is it at now essentially chopped in half Chopped in half. Little, but, but the not, retail is still 32,000. 30, 30, out the door it's 42. Uh, 40, oh, that's right, it went up. But then so, again, don't forget what you came, When it came out, it was 28 grand. Gigi Lecout. Again, some of those value watches from a great brand, the watchmakers, watchmakers, they call them Jaeger Lecoultre, as I like to call it. Some call it JC, some, some call it Gigi Lecout. And then some call it something else, and nobody ever gets it right. That's the most difficult American folk. The most went JLC. The brand that is most difficult to pronounce, i.e. JLC. With that said, the master compressor line. I actually did I it. I disagree. What's another one? Voodoo line. Voodoo line. <laughs> master compressor line tested up to a thousand hours. There's a whole to do with the master compressor line. If you start reading about it or watch one of my back videos or what's on my desk, where I talk about the master compressor line, but what it comes down to is the fact that Jaeger does pr produce quite a few of these. Remember, they're watchmakers, watchmakers that virtually make stuff for pretty much anybody, including the famed JLC 920 that was would you would you agree that based on the complications and the market value of this watch this is probably one of the most bank, best banks for your buck uh, alongside of IWC yeah. yes I think they're in line when it comes to bank for your dollar in terms no, of I'm talking about that specific master compressor for what it does and for the money oh absolutely yeah. absolutely so with that said I urge you guys to read up on the master compressor line this is just one of many examples they make in that line look, look how crisp that is like that's that actually like new. Un unpolished. I don't, think like any, I don't think anybody wore this. Like Still got the OG papers, the correct box, period box. So anyway, so that was Jaeger. Let's go to uh, the Rolex. I got the green OP36. And, wait, I mean, is that one discontinued? It is, no, right? No, green is not. Green is not. It's yellow. so weird. It's so weird how they discontinued the OPs. So There's confused. like no like, rhyme or so reason. Confused. The 41 green, yellow, red, and Tiffany is discontinued. No, green is not discontinued. Green is not. The red, red 36 is discontinued. 41, to my, from what I understand, yellow is discontinued, red is discontinued. I'm not sure if Tiffany is. I'm not sure. And the 36, I'm also not sure, but I know 36 red and yellow are. I mean, you know, we spoke, we spoke in detail about these colorful OPs and how Rolex kind of, you know, made a really bold statement with them using these, these type of color hues. And I just think it's a fun watch. I prefer it to date just. I've said that many, many times before. I love it. Um, and you know what? I, I'm happy that they did not do any Jubilee bracelets with it for whatever reason. I can't say because it would take away from the dot. Yeah. It would take away from the dot. And I also am happy they didn't make this in a day just because the minute you put a date wheel in there well, that's the and, point. A, and that's a bubble, the point, yeah. it will also take yeah. away from the dial. So I'm actually a big fan of the OPs. Big, plain, 41 millimeter, colorful dial, I like the watch. What's the list on these? 58? Yeah, something like that. And what are they at? And they trade for double. They're still, so, a double. still a double. And the reason they're still, and they're gonna continue staying a double because again, it's sort of that entry level point. Uh, speaking of two-tone stuff, two-tone bluesy. Yeah. Uh, again, a watch that's considerably come up in popularity due to the root beer and due to the fact that they just took an existing very, very iconic watch. We talked about those already. Oh, you have one. Oh, no, this There's is, an older one. Yeah, this, that's the older one we did. Well, wait, let's, wait, let's, just, let's for do compar comparison. just for comparison's sake. Yeah, yeah we unboxed that yesterday. It's still in your bin, huh? It's a 16803. So look at, look at the old one, look at the new one. Look just how much more refined they made the newer one. If you look at uh, I mean, you can have to feel that, you know, the bracelet is a lot flimsier than this one. The ceramic bezel edition pops more, yeah. just pops more. But I feel like even the blue dial is a, is a lot more steady where this blue dial, it will discolor after a while and it will sort of change hues where this one stays pretty steady. So just taking an existing watch that's just 
value. But again, they, they're, they're, they're is, there's, there's a humongous market for having this older appeal to it, right? People yeah. actually, a lot of people prefer this to the, not only for price reasons, but just from a aesthetic. Well, what is that, where is this at now? That, that, see, that's still hovering at a, at a very nice premium. It, out the door, you're paying around 14, 15,000, depending on what state you're in. And they're bringing 18 grand. 18 grand. And this has been pretty stable. Yeah. I mean, they went up to like 21, 22. Yeah, yeah, we, well, we sold them over 23, 24 yeah. before. But, you know, they've, they've, they've sort of come down to that, you know, one and a half, 1.25 X on the watch or on the MSRP. Oh, see that? That was uh, actually impressive. I, I actually just impressed myself. So I want to give a quick shout out to MC Overalls. And this is some of their newer stuff, so I want to see what that looks like. I would wear that. Let's say overalls. Soho London Town. Soho London Town. What I really liked, and the reason I started wearing their stuff is the quality. Like you have to kind of like, you know, feel it. So you know, because a lot of companies out there, they try to do apparel. They don't. They give you the hype look or a cool look, but they don't give you the quality. Because at the end of the day, like this is Gebauer's, right? I probably watched this thing 20 times already. The quality still there. It's still comfortable to wear. And that's what I liked about their stuff. Outside of Looking cool? Oh my God, this would have so go well with my sneakers today, by the way. Look at that. Unity, dream squad. I, I, have, I have a Unity uh, uh, sweatshirt from them as well, from the last time. You're I definitely a dreamer, Roman. I am a dreamer. The color is- uh, I love pink. Oh my God. I love pink. Well, guess what, Adrian? I'm keeping it. I guess this Thank is more you. your size. Can I mean, it's plain. Yeah, I'm this is this. this is really cool. So I'm not gonna go and unbox all of them, guys. I appreciate you sending this over. You know I'll wear it because I like Fire. your stuff. So thank you very much. What this is, is a 18038 quick uh, set day date. In immaculate condition. Uh, it's in brand new condition. Immaculate. So, original box, you'll notice the Kanjar logo in the back of the box. And you'll notice that this watch is new. It's new to a point where it has a sticker in the back. Yo, yes, that red conjure on the dial and is so... This, now, I want you to watch this. Normally, when you take an old day date, uh, the minute you flick this clasp, the bracelet will come apart on you. This won't. And the reason for that, because I think this brace, this, oh. this brace has probably I'll been open it, maybe, going, maybe five keep, times. Keep, see? Oh, oh, wow. You see? Now, 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 now squeeze it. But the most special thing about this watch and what makes it super rare is obviously the conjure on logo on the dial itself. Something Rolex does no, long, no longer does. The current conjure or the recent conjure um, Rolexes. Caught it. Ooh, you know, I think we should go play football today. They, <laughs> they, they put, now they put the conjure logo in the back. And really the only way you can tell if they're real or not, because it's a laser engraving due to modern technology is it should come with a card that's gonna say Sultanate of Oman on the card to match the serial number. Otherwise, odds are somebody engraved it on there. It's not that hard to do. Having this in this condition, NOS, and here's the kicker. This thing comes with all the bells and whistles. Original books, even the original handkerchief. Look, it's a so Rolex. just came out of the hospital. Just I'm telling you. Look and last but not least, it has the original papers that are in here Look somewhere. at the condition of the papers, Roman. Tell them, I'm tell the people. Look at the condition of those punched papers. So punched papers is important. It was like it was just printed. I'll stop. <laughs> these were meant for gifts. So the Sultan of Oman, may he rest in peace, he's ordered these by the dozens to give gifts to those that are uh, palace workers, ministers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when these papers came, they came blank and eventually you fill out a name. Of course, that never happened because this watch was never gifted. And it came, made its way all the way from Sunny Oman to us. So I talked about rare is what we do, and I talked about how do you go out there in the world of a million and millions and millions of Rolexes and you find something that's so crown, special crown and so up. unique. Crown, crown up, from crown up. Sorry. Come on, man. Find, a, find a watch that has a logo on a dial for Rolex. There, there is, it, odds are you can't beat it. The only ones that are sort of still running the middles are those Domino's Rolexes. They're still not really catching up because there was a ton of them made and nobody really cares. There were a couple of other company Rolexes that were out More there. More Pizza Hut guy myself, you know. So oh, really? Yeah, okay. but. Really. But a Kanjar logo, if you look at huge auction results and you look at the big boys, you know, if you look at the Daytonas and the Paul Newmans and stuff like that, those with the caboose style as well as the Kanjar logo are the ones that are fetching, you know, into the millions. And the reason for that is there's so few of them. And the ones that are out there, most of us sitting in the vault in Oman at the Oman Palace, and they will never see the light of day unless they go on someone's wrist. The bigger issue is that if it goes on somebody's wrist and it's given it to you by the Sultan of Oman, who's basically God there, 
whoever has it will never sell it. And if that's any why one of our so lucky uh, viewers actually ends up purchasing this, bot, uh, this watch, I will say, do not open it by this flap right here. Oh yeah, it actually opens like this. You know, I mean, people this, have been known to rip this, this off. If you if you see these OG boxes, most of them will be ripped here because people try to do this. Looks like a belt. Because it, 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 it technically looks like this is where it opens, but in reality, it's just this. Guys, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. There is one more Rolex that Two, we want to show. Three, four, five, uh, there is six, one more seven, Rolex we want to show. Can I see that? 10, 11, 12, am, 13. am I supposed to press something? Uh, here, I'm zooming out. No, it's already live. Anyway, stand over there. Show them people. So, Nina, our social media manager, the woman that brings you all this wonderful content. <laughs> today, uh, today we decided which. Today we decided that we're gonna give her one more Rolex. I am gonna wear it on my left, but I put it on my right. We asked her to try it on because we want to see what it looks. She's like, yeah, I think it looks good. This end of it. We told her to keep it. She started crying. I started crying before the live. I'm glad the cameras were rolling. Nina, congratulations for a wonderful job done so far. It's great. And more great things to come from Nina and her. <laughs> Guys, thank you for so much for tuning in. We'll see you on the next one with some other special pieces and unboxings.